Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel, it's Leanne here and this is a follow on video from my little ro resin shopping haul from Let's Resin. But before we get into it I want to point out there's a link below on my blog for the recipe for these delicious festive cookies. There is also a link below to the knitting pattern this week for this little snowman ornament for your Christmas tree. It's the second part in this five part series and the little elf can be found on there too. I also want to point out that the OCF Creative Challenge is currently ongoing and this video is going to be in the theme of the OCF Challenge this month. Now if you watched my shopping haul from Let's Resin you will know that these are the moulds that I was sent and this is what I'm going to be using in today's video. More specifically I'm going to be using the welcome mould and just a couple of the little Christmas decorations and the snow flake decorations in the bottom corner. So let's get on with the video. I'm going to be sticking with the theme for the creative challenge this month using these Let's Resin moles. As you saw in my previous video, this is the company and if you send them a message on Facebook, you will get a 30% off coupon. All the links will be in the blog post below and they were kind enough to send me this welcome sign and all these Christmas decorations and moulds, so I am going to be making a sign today. Now I'm using epoxy resin as this mould takes quite a lot of resin. And I really don't think UV gel would work very well in these moulds. So this is me just measuring out my two part epoxy. I underestimated how much resin I would need for this mould. So through this video you'll probably see me making up a lot of resin to fill this mould completely. And I use up some old resin so if you see my resin looks a little bit yellow like this. I'm just trying to use up some old resin before I buy a new brand of resin. Now I preheat my part A of my resin as it is very cold and even with the heating on my resin gets kind of thick and gloopy so by preheating one part of it, it just thins it down to a water consistency and helps get rid of all the bubbles. So I'm just going to mix that up thoroughly. Now this first layer we are going to just fill in the letters. So I'm going to mix up like a frosty white. I don't want it completely opaque, I want this to be quite subtle. So I'm using some chunky glitter flakes here in a semi-transparent white, some really fine white glitter. I'm just going to give that a little mix. And I'm also going to be using some pearlette here in the colour pearl white. I'm not going to be using very much of this, just a little tap. And I'm going to mix this thoroughly before we fill in our little layers. And the reason I have the snowflake mold here is I'm also going to fill some of them with the leftover resin. I found the best way to fill up molds like this with lots of little gaps and spaces is to put a little bit of resin in, let that self level and then add a little bit more at a time. It's usually the best way to avoid overspill. So as you can see I'm just going around filling up my little bits and pieces, filling up my snowflake moulds, levelling everything out and taking the lighter over them just to pop any bubbles. And with the resin that I have left here I just make sure I top up my letters but I'm actually going to use the scrapes of resin to add some details to my first layer of my sign which will be little dots all over the front that will replicate semi-transparent snowballs. I just thought they looked really pretty and from the front these will be flat circles and then we'll just add some dimension to our sign. Okay, so after a few hours and allowing this to set firm enough that I can then proceed, I mix up a new batch of resin and you don't really need to wait till this is completely cured to move on you just want your resin to be firm enough that you can put your finger on it and it's neither sticky nor really soft as long as you can tap it with your finger and leave no real indentations you can move on to your next layer of le resin now this layer I'm mixing up a clear resin once again like always I'm preheating one half and then mixing it with the cold half just to thin it down and get rid of bubbles 
Now I used about 14 grams of resin, sorry, 30 grams of resin here and I realized that that wasn't enough. For one layer I needed double that amount so I needed about 60 grams of resin and by the end of this mold I use about maybe four layers of resin in total. So if you do the maths you're needing at least a 500 gram bottle of epoxy resin to make one of these signs. Okay, so I'm just adding my clear resin here and I'm just going to pour that all in and then lift and rotate my mould just to swish it around and get it to every edge. Now at first it does seem like I do have enough resin in this layer but once it sits and settles it starts to pull away from the edge and that's when you know you have not got enough resin in your first layer. Now just like every other layer of resin, you go over it with a lighter to get rid of any air bubbles. Okay, so in this first layer these inclusions are actually cake sprinkles, readily available at this time of the year. Just check your local shops for different Christmas themed ones. These are some snowflakes that were really inexpensive and I'd never seen them before but I will try and find some to put on the blog post in case you want to buy some online. Now as you can see the resin is pulling away from the edges so this is where I had to come back and add another 30 gram cup of resin. And just like before you want to rotate it and tilt the mould to get it to all the edges. Now that means my snowflakes will move around but they're pretty easy to reposition. And just push them back in place with my stick and my layer is thick enough that they won't pull away from the edges yet again. So once I have that all nice and thick and my snowflakes in place I'm just going to give another little pop of air bubbles with the lighter. And I'm going to use some of these petal white sugar sprinkles. These are also cake decorating sprinkles and this is going to form the basis for my ground. This is where my trees are going to sit. And these are a very subtle colour so I'm using these right at the front. But first I put a thin layer just to see how thick I want my ground to be and use a stick just to push them back into place. And once I'm happy that that's how thick the ground is going to be I just add a little extra layer to puff them out a little bit. Now this layer of resin is not too thick that this will float too much, it's just a thin enough layer that these sugar sprinkles shouldn't float too far across the surface and if they do they just look like little flakes of snow anyway. I'm disguising that with some of the chunky iridescent glitter here just sprinkled across the entire back before I pop in these little candy silver balls that are also cake sprinkles. I like lots of different textures and thicknesses of items when I'm making things like this because they just add even more depth and 3D effect to things like this. I realised after I put all these down that there wasn't very much bright white in this. Now bright white of the snowflakes is probably one of the very few things that I'm going to use that is an opaque colour. So I want to balance out the piece by adding a little bit more. Most of the things I'm putting in here are going to be a little bit transparent or sparkly. And behind the sprinkles just to solidify that colour and bring that bright white in again I add some fake snow. Now this is something they sell in the shops every year. It's something for making decorations. So I always grab a little bag, it's usually about a pound a bag and if I find any online that will also be in the blog post and that just adds some depth to the ground layer of snow. Now while I was waiting on that setting I decided to fill up that last snowflake by mixing up another batch of the same colour. This is the colour that I made for the first two snowflakes and I just made it a little bit brighter, a little bit whiter before I filled this third one. At this stage I was thinking that I was maybe going to use these snowflakes to adorn the sign 
but in the end I end up turning these into key rings. And once again with the leftover resin I just drip a little bit of the resin into my wet layer on the sign and these just form little balls inside that clear sorry, layer can't speak today inside that clear layer of resin they form little suspended balls and little heavier ones will sink more down to the surface like the original drops of resin that we put in the sign these are just a little bit brighter white so they'll just give a variation in that detail Now as I had more of that resin left over I decided it would be good to try out this other little snowflake mould and for this one I had an idea for using this a little bit differently. So I took a permanent metallic silver pen and I'm just colouring in the raised surface of the snowflake that stands proud within that mould. Now I've done this many times so I know that this kind of marker comes off of the silicone with the resin so I don't need to worry about ruining my mould. You can do this with nail varnish too if you're not comfortable if your marker will work or not. Once I colour that in I just give it a little minute to dry and then I add some little dots all over the base of the mould. Now this is going to be on the front of my resin piece when it's popped out and they just add a little bit of interest and added detail. And I'm using the Paper Mate Metallic Pen in Silver. Paper Mania, sorry. These are scrapbooking pens. So I added my leftover white resin to that mould and then I'm just going to put it aside to let that cure while I'm waiting on my layer of my sign to cure. So the next thing I'm going to do while I'm waiting on this is I'm going to figure out what I want in terms of my scenery. Now I want to use this little tree mould in the sign mould so I decide I'm going to mix up some green resin. Now this is a few couple of hours after that layer on my sign so my sign is actually ready that I can do some more work to it now. I'm adding some green mica powder and some very fine green glitter and I'm also going to add some very dark green chunky glitter to make up my tree colour. I'm all about the sparkle in this sign. I'm sticking to my one creative challenge theme of frosty colours and I think sparkly glittery trees just remind me of trees that have frost on them. So I'm just going to fill my mould in the same way I filled all my other moulds a little bit at a time, let it level out a little tilt my mould to get it into all the little crevices and corners and I don't want to make this too thick I want to keep this tree quite thin because we don't want it to add any extra bulk to our sign that it may stick at the back when we're finished our sign we want it quite thin so it's hidden within the layers if I was going to make this as a keyring or a decoration I obviously would fill it right up to the top of the mould but I'm only half filling it for the purpose that I need it Taking that same green resin, I'm going to use it as paint on the layer of my sign. Now these are really simple, all you need to do is draw a line up to the desired height of your tree and then draw yourself some elongated triangles on top of one another getting smaller as they get near the top of the tree. And you can do as few or as many of these little triangles as you like. This one has about five little triangles but this next one I'm going to show you is a lot simpler. Just take a line up to the height you want your tree. Start with a really wide shallow triangle and then directly above it make a slightly smaller wide triangle and then directly above that make an even smaller triangle that you pull to a point at the tip to make the top of the tree. And then at this side I'm just going to do a half tree only using half the side of the tree right up against the edge of the mould just to add a little interest to my scene. Now ideally I would have made a few of the resin trees in the mould but as I only had one mould and I'm really impatient I figured this was a good alternative and these turn out so cute. I'm just checking I'm leaving space for my little tree once it's cured and I'm just adding a little bit of green down on the ground where I originally thought I would put it but I didn't realise that I, that little ball that is sticking out above it would hinder it. So with what's left I just fill up the other one of these tree decorations 
with the green glitter resin and I'm going to come back to that when I come back to my snowflake decoration. This little snowflake mould is actually one I've had for a few years now. It's an AliExpress mould. I will find a link for that and put it on my blog post in case you want to buy it. And this is one of my favourite snowflake moulds. It's really flexible, but you can't really use it with UV resin because it doesn't cure properly. I just mixed up some white resin here with a pigment that I had left over from Sophie and Toffee. It's an iridescent it's not really white, it's more like a petal white and what I'm doing is taking my palette knife to scrape it into all those details so that they cure nice and flat. So the next day I decided to unmold all my cured pieces and this is how the snowflake one turned out. As you can see it's picked up all those dots and that silver. The tree was still a little bit bendy because it was thinner and needed more time to cure but as I'm putting this inside a layer of resin on my sign it doesn't really matter just position it there and the green one of these this one cured perfectly because it was a bit thicker as you can see it's hard to tell on the video but it was really cute and theirs were not quite ready to be demolded the snowflakes as you can see are really soft so I just put them aside for now so I realized that this is probably the best position and not on the green mound that I made for it so what I'm going to do next is get ready and unmold all the other pieces these are my snowflakes that I thought I was going to use on the bottom of my sign. So I just demolded them and had a look and they turned out really cute. I like the fact that two of these snowflakes are molded on the front in nice shapes. And I love the fact that all three of them are completely different. They're nice and chunky though so that you could make these into decorations or key rings. They're not too fragile that they would get broken very easily. So I'm just checking again that's where I want my tree and because I let these set a little bit longer they were still soft but as I'm going to be putting them in resin I didn't really bother I just was very careful in taking them out of the mold make sure I didn't break them or stretch them because I'm just too impatient sometimes and I wanted to get on with it. So as you can see these turn out really pretty and they're really delicate little snowflakes really fragile though so you have to be really careful when you're demolding these. So I just picked out all the ones that I wanted, fitted them into all the gaps and right now I'm just laying these out on my cured dry resin just so I can figure out where I want them. And once I'm happy with the placement I'm going to mix myself up some more clear resin. And it's the same process as every other time in this video. I mix up one half, heat it up, mix it in with the cold half to give myself a more fluid resin. I'm probably sure you're getting sick of watching the process of mixing resin by now. So this one is another clear resin because we're going to be settling our tree and our snowflakes in so we don't really want anything to get in the way of that obscuring them so this is our second layer of clear resin and just before I do that I'm going to cut off any protruding sharp bits off the back of the tree and then I'm going to give it a little sand with just a nail file there and make it nice and flat because I don't want anything sticking out through the back of my sign I won't have to make this sign so thick. So just if you keep everything thin and sand everything flat before you put them in your sign, you'll be sure to get a nice even smooth back when you're finished. So once I'm happy with everything, it's time to put in my resin. Now my snowflakes are still sitting in there, but that's fine because I can just lift them up once the resin is in there. And once it's in, I'm just going to do what I've done with every other layer and pick up the mould and tilt it back and forth side to side. I started moving the snowflakes in just to make sure that I was getting, the, getting rid 
I'm tripping over my words today. This is not a very good video for me talking. Picking them up to get the air bubbles out. But I decided I should really probably spread the resin out first. Now, as you can see, my resin mold is starting to get full. So you have to be a bit more careful if you tilt your mold around at this level. I poured out a couple of places because I was being a bit harsh handed and being a bit vigorous with it. So I just use my tweezers to pull the resin up to the edges instead and then I pick up my little snowflakes, give them a swish around in the resin to get rid of any air bubbles and lay them back down in the desired position. So once I'm happy that they've got no air bubbles and I'm moving them to where I want them, I push my tree down flat against the surface and push it down really firmly. That way any air trapped under the tree will be pushed out at the sides and it too won't have any air bubbles under it. Now the tree is in, I can see that a couple of snowflakes need moved around. So I'm just rearranging everything that I can at this stage just so that it's going to look really nice from the front. And then just to make those trees look a little like they have more going on with them, I added some of these iridescent circles in this layer that will sit just behind the trees and just add more depth to my scene. Then I'm going to take some more of that fake snow and just put some behind the bases of the trees. And what you're basically doing is creating a, a depth into your image. When you look in, you can see all these layers behind things and it just makes things look better. Now when I put that aside to cure I'm going to work on these little decorations. Now with these I had this little idea because of these indented bits that I think you're supposed to fill with a coloured resin I wanted to do something different and treat these as though they were shaker moulds. So I'm colouring in the front of my bell decoration rather than colouring in the tree like I did with the snowflake I'm doing this one backwards and I'm colouring in the outside of my piece and this is another one of those paper mania pens this time in gold and once I've coloured all that in I'm just going to leave it for just a wee minute just to dry itself out and I'm going to go and grab my micro marbles. Now, before I put the micro marbles in, I'm taking some of this acetate sheeting that came from packaging and I'm going to cut myself two little pieces that fit just a little bit over the shapes that I'm going to be covering. You want an edge on them so that you can glue this to the front of the resin. And this is going to encapsulate the micro marbles in those little spaces so that we can later dome these pieces. Now for the tree one, I'm just cutting one out this like a bigger silhouette of the tree just to fit over that. And then I'm going to take another little scrap of my snowflake mold for my snowflake sorry and cut just a circle. Now I keep packaging like this anytime I get something with plastic so that I can reuse it in crafts like this but you can buy acetate sheets online for doing things like this. I just try to use up things that come into my house and if you've noticed in this video there's a lot of plastic cups being used that most of them I peel the resin back out of and reuse them but I do have a lot of plastics from doing resin for the last 10 years that I'm trying to use up because I'm switching everything to reusable silicon cups and reusable silicon stirring sticks or things that I can keep and clean and reuse. So I'm just filling my decorations here with some micro marbles. I'm not putting too much because I want to be able to move these around. So in the tree I'm putting some green and a little red star and in the snowflake I just put some silver which has a little tiny bit of gold mixed in there. I just thought these would be fun and I wanted to try this out. Then I'm taking the leftover of my resin which is thickened up a little bit and I'm using that like a glue all the way around the edge of my snowflake before I adhere my acetate on top of this. It's the exact same process if you're making a shaker, it's just this is a little more delicate and with much smaller things going in the shaker itself. Then I'm dragging the resin out to the edges of the mold just to even out the surface a little bit so when I come to dome in later there's no lumpy bumpy bits that I, that I can't cover. So do this on both of these decorations. 
nice thin layer, stick the acetate on and then just smooth out the resin the best that I can to the edges of this piece. So all of these are getting put aside and I will be leaving some of these resins to cure. Now this is a stage where I realized that I had left my welcome sign a little bit too long. I like to use mica powders on the backs of resin pieces and I usually do it when the resin gets to a certain level of tackiness. It's firm but still sticky and when I touched it there I realized that maybe it had cured faster than I wanted it to and when I try the mica powder here it just doesn't stick. You can see it's just sitting on the surface and even when I use my lighter to try and re-melt my resin. There is a stage of resin where you can take a light or two and it will turn to liquid yet again but it's just too far gone. My resin has cured beyond the point of doing this method but I will put a little link at the top or at the end of this video for where you can watch that method and instead I'm going to proceed by mixing up a coloured back layer for this. So once again I'm mixing up another 60 grams of resin for another layer but this time I'm going to divide this layer, this colour, sorry, this resin into four other little silicon cups and the fifth will be in this mixing cup. So I'm just going to divide that equally between all my little cups. I mean, you don't have to be very specific with this. This is just so I can mix up different colors. And then I'm going to take my assortment of mica powders and I'm going to pick out five colors that go really well together. I've got four shades of blue and one lilac color. And the blues are a variation going from lightest blue to quite a dark blue. And then I've got quite a bright blue as well. I just wanted my sky background to be a little more interesting rather than just one solid colour and if the method that I normally do had worked I would have used all of these colours anyway. So I mix them up very well and then I'm just going to dump them on my piece kind of haphazardly. Now I'm trying to keep the darkest colours to the bottom most of the dark colour to the bottom and then just splodges here there and the lighter colours nearer the top and that's just so when I come to blending these a little bit it does look kind of like a little bit of a gradient and the purple there is just to add some warmth to this scene and a little bit of interest with a different colour. Now I'm not being particular, I'm just chucking them on all over the place because we're going to rotate until our mould which is going to help blend them a little bit but we're also going to apply some heat in a moment which will further help blend them and because these are mica powders when you apply heat in, to mica powders in resin it helps them to naturally bring out some of the effects in the mica powder that they are kind of loved for and it's, they sort of become very textured in appearance, they get like little, it's hard to explain, little cells and things, the mica moves around in the resin when you apply heat and it just makes a really nice effect, you'll see it when I bring out my heat gun in a moment. You can see it sort of starting. Okay, so while that is drying, I go back to these little decorations and all I'm going to do for these at this time is dome the front. So yet again, another layer of clear resin, although this time I didn't preheat my resin. I was just getting fed up with the trips back and forward to the kitchen. So this time I just did it completely cold and you'll see when I'm laying it down how many bubbles are in my resin when I don't preheat it. But as I've got my heat gun handy, I'm just going to use my heat gun to warm the resin through once it's on my piece and that really does help when they're just little thin pieces like this. I wouldn't pass up the preheating my resin if I was doing thicker pieces but sometimes with doming with my heat gun I can get away with it. You just set your heat gun on the lowest setting so you can get really close with it blowing off the edges and just take a moment to heat that resin through although it will still leave some air bubbles but these pieces were so sparkly that I didn't think it really noticed. 
So I'm just scraping the resin and a really thin layer to the edges of the piece and then once I've got it right to the edges I lay them down and just put more resin in the center and resin is self level so it just pulls the resin out to the edges for me and then I can get rid of all the bubbles that I can with my heat tool and that's how to do a perfect dome and then as a last little bit you just take the resin to those little fiddly bits that would normally overflow you just do that last those little tags where the ornament string goes and that's how to do a perfect dome okay so it is the moment that we have all been waiting for it is time to demold all the cured resin but i'm going to tease you with these first so these are nice and cured everything's shaking inside you can't see the acetate at all and i really love how these turned out and i just had to admire them for a moment i was delaying the demolding because i was a little bit nervous because i did this welcome sign from front to back and you never know what it's going to look like i also did a clear one of these because i had an idea about just filling them with colored marbles but let's get to it so the first thing I'm going to do is obviously loosen all the edges just to get them away. Just to sort of loosen up a little bit just because yes I was delaying turning this over and taking out of the mold because you never know if something is maybe doesn't going to look right or if you've put too much in it. So yes I was delaying a little bit but at the same time I was kind of excited to see this. So once I've got it away from all the edges, I turned it over, laid it on the table and then slowly peel back the mould. And I can already see through the mould, it's looking pretty fab. I'm peeling it back and this mould is so flexible and so easy to remove. This was not hard at all, it came away absolutely perfectly and it's nice and clean for the next time that I want to use it. And this, you can't really see it on the film, on the camera here, but it has so much depth and so much 3D going on, but it just doesn't really come across on the video. But I hope you can see how pretty it actually is, even when it is flat like this. I mean, I'm totally in love with it. And as you can see, these three little holes here, this is so you can turn this into a key rack or a hanger, or you could probably put some sort of beads hanging down from there well I'm going to turn this into a key rack so that's what I'm going to do here well this is still curing a little bit because some of my edges I noticed were a tiny bit soft I'm just going to figure out how to turn this into a key rack and I noticed the holes were the same size as the holes in the snowflake so I'm using that as my guide to find something that would fit I was just double checking that they were the same size so I found that chopsticks cheap chopsticks fit perfectly into these holes so that's what I'm going to use to make my little hooks so I was just checking if they were the same size and then this is when I thought maybe I could actually leave the snowflakes on attached to the hooks dangling down and give this some interest but I later decided that these would be much cuter as key rings hanging from the hooks instead so I'm just checking and I had a really duff chopstick there that was really skinny so I just discarded that one now to cut these to size, they already have a groove on the chopsticks naturally. I'm just going to take my craft knife, set it into the groove on that piece of wood. You'll see me do that now. And just roll the stick back and forth as I apply a little pressure. And what that will do is the knife will cut into the wood and make it easy to snap off. I mean, how easy is that? So once I have three of them cut, I'm just going to sand off that little rough edge so it's nice and flat. And here we have three little pegs that fit perfectly into your keyring rack. Now you don't need to do anything else to these, just paint them and glue them in. But I want to make these a little bit more special and I don't really want my keys just coming off the end. So I'm going to actually glue beads onto the end of these. I'm just giving a little sand to the top of these pieces so everything is nice and smooth for me proceeding to the next stage. So I just have some of these large wooden beads that have got really large holes in them that were perfect for these little pegs. But if you don't have these, you could make some little polymer clay balls and just push your wooden pegs into them before baking. I'm going to take some super glue. I'm using gel super glue here, some Gorilla super glue. And I'm going to glue the pegs into the beads and then fill the holes at the end of the beads with a little bit of the super glue just so that when I come back later to finish these off, they don't have a big massive hole in the end of them. 
Now I'm only going to show you me gluing these together and how I'm going to colour them and do the rest of these off camera because this video is getting humongously long as it is. So once these completely dry, what I'm going to do is take my silver paper, paper mania pen and colour the whole thing with the silver pen just covering every piece of the little peg and the bead and the dried super glue and then using nail varnish I'm going to cover the complete little pegs with a coat of nail varnish and then when that is dry I'm going to take some UV resin and varnish all my little pegs and beads with some UV resin and completely cure them before I glue them into my sign. I'm just smoothing off the super glue here just making it nice and smooth and in the next frame when I cover this, I'm just showing you here that I'm going to use this silver metallic pen. Now you could use a silver metallic acrylic paint, you could use silver nail varnish. I just happen to have these pens and because I'm going to be using the silver glitter nail varnish as well. And this is how these turned out. As you can see I glued some diamantes onto the ends where they were still a little bit rough where the hole was but they've been nice and varnished with UV gel and I've glued them in to my sign. Now while I had my sign glued like this I actually took my sanding file and filed the backs of my piece. And now I'm just showing you that I turned those snowflakes into key rings and uh, that one there is Santa's key to my house. This one I just left plain on a key ring that I'm going to actually add my house keys to. And then the third one I turned into a really jangly gorgeous snowflake key ring which I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that one yet, I really like it so I may put one of the house keys on there and those two little holes at the top, you can screw this to a wall but I'm actually going to add string to this so that this thing can be taken down and put up every Christmas so what I'm going to do is just thread the string through from the back and then I'm going to use a friendship bracelet knot a figure four knot and I'm just going to do this several times until I make a nice little bit of cord. Just a few, I think I did it seven or eight times and then I'm going to tie it in a normal knot, do it twice and I'm going to cut myself a length of thread and repeat this at the other side with the other end of my string. Just cutting myself some excess bring it through from the back and once again using that I think they call it a figure four knot it's when you make it look like a four before you pull it I'm going to do that at that side same amount of times as I did on the other side and this just makes it a little bit stronger and a little bit prettier and once I've done that seven or eight times and then tied it in the two knots I'm going to get some of my glue again and I'm just going to use my glue on where the knots are tied off glue where the thread comes out and where the knot is let that dry before I trim off those two excess bits of string and this is just a really easy cheap way to add a hanger to your little sign so to finish this off though because I'm going to be hanging this up every year I want to pad the back a little bit and just to protect my wall from the back of the resin but it also protects the resin too I'm going to lay it down on a piece of craft felt and draw around it then I'm just going to draw inside that shape by a couple of millimetres just to make it a little bit smaller before I trim it down and cut it out to fit on the back of my piece. I'm just going to cut that felt out and because this is something you're not really going to pull at you can get away with using the glue that I'm going to use to glue it on. I mean you could use a glue gun but I'm not sure that would hold to the resin very well. So what I'm going to do is first check that my felt fits, which it does because we made it a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to go and grab some tacky glue. And tacky glue is quite fast drying, it's like an all purpose glue and it's amazing the amount of things that it will stick to and because you're not really going to be touching this and pulling it, this is perfectly fine for applying your felt to your resin. I'm just going to spread out the glue nice and thin and then I'm just going to adhere it to the back of my resin piece. And I don't even need to cut holes for the string because the string is already in place and that will just glue it to the back and make it more secure. So then we're trimming off our excess bits of thread and our sign is done. It is done and dusted. 
and then I can hang my little keys on it here. Santa's key to get in this Christmas and a couple of spare key rings if anyone in the house wants to use them for their keys over the Christmas period. So they can hang their keys up and they'll still look really pretty. And I want to show you I finished these decorations. This one I added a green bow to and on the back I wrote Xmas 2019 and domed it. And I put a little thread, gold thread on there for it to hang on our tree. And the other one, I finished that one off for my friend Heather with a silvery blue because she loves blue. And on the back, I've written Heather 2019. And I'm going to give that to her for her tree because her tree is pastel colours this year. And on this one, I want to show you, I filled it with different coloured of marbles before sealing it up. But because I used UV resin on this, you can see the acetate and it's not very well done. I think I might come back to this and play some more with this mold because there's so many variations you could do with this. But I'm really happy with the way everything turned out. I love these molds. I love how they've all ended up looking. I especially love these little decorations. I'm going to put mine on my tree and then give Heather her one. And I love my sign. My sign is going to now sit in my hallway. Well, hang in my hallway. And it just looks so pretty. I just love how pretty it looks. I love the depth. And as you walk in, it's the first thing you see. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And watch for the next one coming. When I'm going to be using more of the molds from Let's Resin. To make something different. And I hope you enjoyed the things I made. Leave me a comment below. And I'll see you in the next video.